So very few uh, uh, topics has been introduced, right? In I guess one is the independence thing, and the other one is the function of random variables. Let me expose on some max min. Okay, uh, streaming has been started. Let me give you the uh, YouTube link here. Yeah. So this is the YouTube link. It's also being streamed. Sir, where, where we can find yesterday's session? Uh, you can find it in the same uh, channel, I guess. Okay. There is no link in the calendar. That's why I asked. Oh, okay. So better you just subscribe to statistics uh, to statistics for data science to channel okay, so okay. that uh, you can get the links uh, okay sir office hours are not recorded yesterday ah, was not recorded. it will not be recorded office hours are just uh, sessions where the student joins if, if he or she has a doubt and the mentor or mentee will explain clear the doubt so it is not meant to be streamed. So any other doubts? Uh, we are going to study. Mm -hmm. Which week we are going to study? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so today uh, we are going to do week two of statistics two. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. So we will start with uh, just just sir, recap or where we left in week one, and we will continue from there. Yes. Sir, uh, yeah, just now I joined. Maybe I'm late. Just a couple of uh, doubts, very simple doubts. And may I ask now, or should I wait for uh, my turn to come? Simple later? doubts in the sense, is it? Support yeah. kind of doubt? No, 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 no. Not okay. support. Not support doubt uh, related to the content that we gone through. Okay, maybe so, you can pose the question. And uh, I'll just ask. Uh, you decide whether mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. lecture in the lecture two, like uh, second week, second uh, session, mm. uh, L two point two. In twenty eight minutes, there is an example given. Okay, mm. so in that example, it is supposed to be a geometric. Uh, 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 data right the sample given uh, but looks like they, there is a sample distribution of 0 1 2 3 4 mm -hmm. but uh, for 0 1 and 2 it is geometric uh, progression but 3 and 4 it is the same data 1 by 6 16 and same 1 by probability 16. Uh -huh. yeah 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 same probability mm -hmm. so my doubt is if it is repeating the value can we still uh, take that as a geometric it's not geometric first of all see geometric uh, is the range of geometric is infinite okay the geometric distribution uh, is a distribution which is uh, which actually counts the number of times you need to do the experiment to get a success and that number of times is not fixed so it can go till infinite so such kind of uh, random variables are geometric random variables here it is not geometric, it is a discrete random variable where uh, the random variable x takes some 5 values, 0 to 4, 5 values with some probabilities. Yes. That's it. But it's not then, geometric. But then why we are calling this as a geometric probability and actually it gives that impression 0, 1 and 2, it is 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 by 8. Hmm. Till 3 also 1 by uh, 16, some change hmm. in the value, but hmm. 3 and 4 are repeating. That That is... Uh, the probabilities are repeating, that's it. It's not the values are repeating, right? Yeah, values are not repeating, but uh -huh. the probability... So, so in your repeating. range, you have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Right. That's right. it. All, all 5 are distinct, right? 0 is different from 1, 1 is different from 2, 3 and 4. Uh, and the corresponding probabilities can be this can be p1 this can be p2 p3 p4 and p5 so the only conditions on this p1 to p5 are uh, all the pi's uh, should be in between 0 to 1 that's one condition and when you add this p1 to p5 
you should get one so these are the only conditions nowhere it is mentioned that uh, not uh, nowhere it is mentioned that p2 cannot be equal to p3 or p3 cannot be equal to p4 they the probabilities can be equal mm. okay okay so fine i'm i'm clear mm. on this uh, one more uh, doubt this on the same same session at the fifth minute uh, this joint pmf and uh, the product of marginal we are verifying in the third case wherein in this example you are talking about three digit uh, triple zero to triple nine number combination mm -hmm. okay here we are saying that if the remainder is one and uh, the z value which is the rightmost value if it is zero such a case is uh, 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 like one and two so what we are saying is the w value one that is number is uh, odd and uh, z which is the rightmost value is uh, two so it is a this case will never happen right mm. so my doubt is uh, whether this case will happen or not i mean that we have to apply our mind and logic or how, how is it like uh, is there any uh, way it, mathematically ah uh, no, no 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 mathematical way you you know all the numbers right uh, yeah from triple zero to triple nine mm -hmm. so once you know the numbers you know whether that combination is possible or not okay. right uh, mm. so in that way you exclude include the things mm. okay fine okay thanks okay uh so from my end only one request uh, is if you have any doubts in during the discussion please raise your hand i will call out your name and ask and i request everyone to be on mute if you don't have any doubts even if you have a doubt please raise your hand then i will call your name and we can discuss okay so the first one hour i would like to spend on uh, a quick overview of week 2 so let's let's brush all the contents which are in week 2 and then we will move to examples or in between also we will do examples concept example concept yes sandra uh hello sir hmm. uh i have gone through the week too but uh, i didn't found that uh, uh, we are learning anything new hmm. and because uh, it's like the same we are finding the joint pmf but this whole week has a lot of lectures and we are like discussing some kind of the same thing which we have discussed so far Is like joint so pmf and okay yeah, like only the difference, I think the graph part, but why we are having so much lectures, like anything, uh, like in the week three and week four, like something is coming, uh, which is related to it. Ah, uh, see, mo mo most of the lectures are uh, given for your intuition purposes. So few lectures will not have any activity questions, if you have observed. So th those are just uh, giving more intuition on how these random variables are behaving what do we mean by this PMF? How is that probability is varying with uh, the range of values, set of values? And the most important thing in week two is just now I discussed, right? The functions of random variables. So you might have seen X as a random variable and Y as a random variable and they're joint. But in week two, you will be seeing something like X plus Y or max of X comma Y, maximum of one of the two or any function between these two. Okay. So, so these functions is a new thing that is introduced and week two has the most important concept which will haunt you till the last week. I will tell you when the concept comes. You might have overviewed it, but uh, I will emphasize on the most important topic of uh, week two, which you have to take it over, take home, and this will haunt you till week 12 and also in future courses also. Okay, uh, let us start. Let us start discussing about uh, week two, a quick overview. Okay, so in week one, uh, everyone would have convinced yourself about this particular expression, which is joint PMF. Yeah, joint PMF is equals to. Conditional, conditional upon marginal. Conditional upon marginal. Cond conditional or multiplied by marginal. Multiplied by marginal. Marginal. Right? So, 
if i have any two random variables x y are discrete till now we are in the discrete case so let me name it as x y are discrete random variables then i have this very simple yet most important expression so this joint i can write it as conditional times the marginal in one way also i can condition on x y given f l x is x y times f x of x so i can i can write this joint in two different ways once conditioning on y and the next is conditioning on x so so far so good but the question here is you observe this conditional distribution closely so you are conditioning it x and you are conditioning it on one random variable y and you are observing the probabilities of the other random variable so this is the conditional probability mass function and we will compute this using this joint you just divide the joint divided by marginal you do this and you claim that uh, this fy of y will be divided by the joint and something will happen and the distribution of x changes so what i mean so what we are doing here is so we are conditioning conditioning on y and looking at the probabilities of x so why we are looking we will look so whether if i if i fix y is something happening to x that is what this conditional distributions so the very next question uh, everyone asks is what if the condition is not valid or is it not conditioning that much or it's not varying if you fix y the probabilities of x is not changing is whether that can happen or not so that's the second question so always is it always x varies with y or y varies with x does this happen all the time does this conditioning always affect the probabilities that's the question whether conditioning on y one random variable y will change the probabilities of the other random variable yes no no uh, it is independent yeah i it it is not i right so 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 sometimes what happens is it may not so if it is not imposing any uh, so okay let me put it in this way so you are conditioning it but your probabilities are not changing what does that mean so you are conditioning on y saying that y has taken this value but still your fx even though you condition is not changing means this is not impactful it is being equal to this that's it whatever the distribution x has even though you impose some condition on y the distribution which it x has is not affecting is not affected so that means this conditional distribution or the conditional pmf what you have what we have discussed when can this be equals to marginal so that's the question so can this happen can this happen this one this so can this happen if this happens what is the so in order to in order this to happen what should be the condition so answer to this is can this happen yes as sometimes it might it can happen that your conditional pmf can be equals to marginal 
what does it say is the same thing if conditional is equals to the marginal it says even though you condition anything on y does does uh, that does not impact on x or even though you condition on x that does not impact on y there is no impact on y so that means these two are independent to each other you do something on y that will not affect x and you do something on x that that is not being affected to y so what so in short the technical term is these two are independent to each other whatever happens to x can happen and whatever happens uh, to y it can also happen irrespective of dependence yes now jot sir one clarification what hmm. do you mean by equal uh, they should have the exact same pmf or they should overall follow the same type of distribution uh, like both should be binomial or both should be exactly the same distribution binomial distribution both should be same binomial distribution with same parameters with so, the same so, mass at every point ha huh, every point so this okay. is not affected so this is null you write that or you don't write it is not affecting that much you condition or don't condition both are same in some sense okay okay so yeah so the technical term for this is independence so if x is independent to y independent to y then whatever we said till now holds then this happens so kind of uh, in english words also independent means it's not related okay one 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 funny example is uh, uh if you if you are uh, kind of lovers then you have to whatever decision you take you should tell her or it impacts on her then you become x like you just left if you are alone single then you know no need to be answerable to anyone or you can live your life independently so the decisions or whatever you take will not impact on other person so that is what this independence mean so here treat x and y as two different random variables and if you are changing y or if you are conditioning on y if x is not affected or if you are changing x or if you are conditioning on x if your y is not affected then we say x and y are independent to each other yes anyone raise their hand no okay okay cool uh now see if your condition uh, conditional pmf is equals to marginal who is that yes anna uh yeah hello hmm hello uh, can we have a picture like version of this you uh, think yes yes i will go there i will go there uh, uh, the next thing is i am going there okay okay so if x is independent to y then this will happen so no condition even though you impose condition or you don't condition both are same so if i have this i know that my joint is this and previously we just saw that this can be replaced with fx of x so if i replace that i get this so now what is this the left hand side is the joint pmf and the right hand side is the product of marginals so this is joint pmf this color this is product of marginals so we got our conditions now so now we can formally define what this independence means 
okay so formally this is how we define uh, x and y are independent are said to be independent if the joint is equals to product of marginals for all so this is very important so previously i didn't bring that but uh, you need we have some constraints always so this is very important this should hold true for all x in the range of x and for all y in the range of y okay so this should hold true for all each and every one each and every value of x and y so if your x can take some 10 values and y can take some 10 values then in your joint table you will be having some 100 entries so you should check for all the 100 entries you should check this condition and only then you can claim that they are independent so the converse or uh, the next thing is when do i say x and y are not independent so this is the condition for independent so x and people who know logic can uh, easily relate this x and y are not independent if this condition should be failed for at least one of the entry so here it is for all for all you should check in order to be independent so in order to be not independent you just have to come up with one special case if there is one special case such that your joint is not equals to product of marginals for some x belongs to tx and y belongs to ty so not even for some for at least one okay. or in mathematical representations we will say like this if there exists so only one should exist if there exists x belongs to tx and y belongs to ty such that this happens then we say they are not independent so you just have to come up with one contradiction one case contradicting uh, the joint is equals to product of marginals that's it we are done let me emphasize this this is we will say x and y are not independent if this condition you can show it for one case, one case. Let's do some examples on this. I hope this is clear to everyone. So when do we say independent? And for independence, there are two conditions. You can write either of the two. One is conditional PMF is equals to the marginal. That means the condition is not impactful or not affecting the distribution of uh, the other random variable. And from that, we deduce that uh, when your joint BMF is equals to product of marginals, even then this holds. Uh, what holds? X and Y are independent. So either of the two conditions, and this is the most predominantly used condition to check whether uh, two random variables are independent to each other or not. You just have to check joint is equals to product of marginals or not. Okay. So yeah. And when do we say it is not independent? For that, you just have to come up with x and y such that this f of x, f of f x y of x comma y is not equals to f of f x of x times f y of y. So one special case. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, when you started writing the formula and hmm. uh, starting, you mentioned that joint PMF is equal to conditional PMF into marginal PMF. Mm -hmm. And then we reach to independent uh, case. Like, so is it the reason we are taking out the conditional PMF completely out of the formula that we are telling joint PMF is equal to multiple of uh, marginal? Um, uh, uh, so, 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 uh, I'm just replacing this with this. See, you see this conditional 
if it is independent above i discussed that if it is independent the condition won't affect much okay so so that's where we call it as independent the condition is not impactful whether you write that condition or you do, don't write that condition is same so if i discard that condition it will be like this which is the nothing but the marginal so what we claim is in order to be independent conditional pmf is more or less equal to the marginal pmf so using that i just replaced this conditional pmf with this fx of x then i got a product of marginals that's it so if you say this is 1 and this is 2 i just re substituted 1 uh, in place of 2 in the equation 2 mm. so i got the third one okay yeah okay mm. Mm. okay uh, so let's 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 do quickly do uh, examples so let me start with uh, very easy x takes let me say i toss a coin toss a coin two times and x is the x represents the number of heads in two tosses and let y be the number of tails in two tosses example 1 so toss a fair coin toss a fair coin two times and x and y are this now my question is uh, is x and y are independent okay i i am giving time to solve it. okay people try it out so hints i like i will give you the hints so hints are first hint is write down the ranges of x and y okay so the next hint is then form a joint table or compute the joint table compute joint distribution table okay and next is uh, check whether this fx of x comma y is equal to fx of x times fy of y for all uh, x belongs to tx and y belongs to ty okay so this tx and ty comes from here from the first step and if it is true the last step is true then we say x and y are independent if it is false for one case at least then we claim x and y are not Okay, any answers they are not independent not independent not independent okay let me wait for one more minute are people trying or just simply sitting because i can't see you people trying sir trying. i'll give you one more minute De dependent right to good so it should be dependent yes sir dependent so let me let me let us uh, quickly write it down for the people who haven't have tried and failed let's look at here so first step is let's write down the ranges of x and y as i said we have tossed the coin two times and x, x represents the number of heads so what are the possibilities for uh, number of heads in two tosses 
ability that the number of heads is 0 x is 0 and number of tails is also 0 so can that happen no no sir not possible no. Uh, for uh, uh, before you draw this table you just write down all the possible cases because it's very easy to write down because we are tossing only two times so either it can be head head or a head tail tail head or tail 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 so these are the four uh, possible cases so this is the sample space and corresponding x y values also you can write it down so x is the number of heads so this will be 2 in this particular case it will be 2 and this is 0 and in this case number of heads is 1 number of tails is 1 in this case also number of tail heads is 1 and number of tails is 1 in this case it is 0 and 2 so probability that we get head head right probability is there. getting head and head is uh, as we said we are tossing the coin two times probability of getting two heads is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 which is 1 by 4 similarly it is 1 by 4 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 now you can see that this pair 2 comma 0 means x taking 2 so from here, x taking 2 and y takes 0 as probability 1 by 4. And we have two cases where x takes 1 and y takes 1. So each case has probability 1 by 4. The, therefore, the total probability that x takes value 1 and y takes value 1 is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4, which is 1, 1 by, by 2. 2. And the last case is when x takes 0 and y takes 2 is 1 by 4. So now you can see in the joint table you have only 3 entries with non-zero values. All others are not possible cases. So you see at, because you are tossing a coin 2 times you cannot have 0 heads and 0 tails. That's not possible. Yes. Anna? Any doubt? Anna Mohammed? Yeah, uh, why we choose the range 0 and 1, 2? It should be 0 and 1, right? This is confused. See, uh, that's the confusion uh, pe many people might have. What, do, what does X represent? X is representing the number of heads. Right? Yeah. Uh, so if you are tossing a coin, you just uh, think of like you have a coin in your hand and you are tossing a coin. And what can you say about the number of heads? You may not get any head in the two tosses, right? So that's zero. Okay. Zero, one, or and two. And you can get one head, and you can get both heads. That is two. So you possibilities for x is zero, one, two. Now, so this will be zero. This is not possible. And x being one and y being zero, this is also zero. X being two and y being zero. So that's probability 1 by 4. Sir, uh, uh. just one doubt in the previous table what you presented. Mm. It is uh, when all both are the head. And mm. uh, so each case probability is half. And so we are multiplying. Is that right? Ha, ha, ha. So for getting first, first toss head is half. And for getting the second toss head is half. So for getting head and head is like half into half. Uh, then in the right hand side, when you are writing the uh, first case, it is 1 by 4. But in second case, why it is half? 
Ah, why it is half? Because see, even head to tail. If you get head to tail or tail head, both corresponds to getting one head and one tail, right? Mm -hmm. We are not worried about the order here. So x simply represents the number of heads, and y simply represents the number of tails. So even though you get head to tail or tail head, both corresponds to x is equals to one and y is equals to one. Okay. Correct. Uh, correct. So uh -huh. this one you are saying it is a one four plus one four, mm -hmm. but in first case how you are uh, coming to this that con con conclusions you, you are because because you don't have two zero the same combination in any other cases, no other case has two zero. So x taking two and y taking zero, only one possible case is there that is mm -hmm. head head. Mm-hmm. But x taking one and y taking one, there are two possibilities. Correct. Right. So that is why I added the probabilities of this. So it's like, so for getting probability, uh, for getting x is equals to one and y is equals to one, I can either get head to tail, or it's or, right? Or means you just have to add the probabilities, or you can have tail head. The probability of getting head to tail is one by four, and probability of getting tail head is one by four. If you add these two, you'll get one by four. But if you see here, x takes two and y takes zero, there is only one possible case. It should be head head. No other possible case is there. If there is any po other possible case where x takes two and y takes zero, we would have added that probability also. But here there is no such case. Only one case. And its probability is one by four, so I straight away wrote that one by four. But since uh, this has two possibilities, I just added the probabilities. And the last one is also one only one possible case zero two, x takes zero and y takes two. There is no other possibility, so that's why it is one by four again. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, got Making it. Sense? Yeah. Okay, so from that uh, you can fill this table. So this is zero. This will be half, and this is zero. You see, uh, see, you are tossing only coin two times. See this two. Sir, I now. raised my hand. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, so can we say that for tossing of first coin and tossing of second coin? Are independent of each other, so we are ah, multiplying no, the probability. That's, that's the assumption we should take, but it's intuitive, right? You toss a coin once, and then if you toss the next coin second time, it is independent of yes, the sir. first toss, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. so, so, so we it's are an multiplying assumption. the probability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an okay. assumption. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can you please, sir, explain how to fill this table based on the above information? Ah, based on the above information, you have only three possible cases which has positive probability, which is either x takes two and y takes zero, x takes one and y takes one, x takes zero and y takes two. So these are the only possible cases where there is a positive probability. Every other case is not possible. Not possible in the sense, you see this particular example, here, this 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 zero here. What does this this entry refers to? So this is. Probability so, that x takes one tail two. and two heads. No, no, no. X represents heads and y represents tail. Ah, one tail and so two okay. heads. Right. Yeah. Ah, you are tossing a coin two times, and can you get two heads and one tail? No, no. Yeah. No, right. So that's why it is zero. So that is zero. So uh, on the above information, probability of x is equal to y equal to zero. Hmm. So you're just putting wherever you see uh, the row x and the column y is column y, right? Columns are x and row is y. So this zero one two for x. This is zero at column. Yeah, the rows x. are x and columns are y. Hmm. What do you mean by rows? Rows, you mean this, right? Yeah. These are rows. Yeah, right? these are rows. Ah, so yeah, these I'm these are. I'm referring to the. I'm referring to the two heads, very first one. Hmm. Two heads. Yeah, 
x equal to 2 that is the first row ah okay x is equal to 2 is the third column and y is equal to 0 is the first row see this y okay. this is how it is see this this y is this yeah understood yeah this x is this correct x is uh, uh, and y is column ah okay you are you are saying like that okay if you are saying like that okay it's true but see the thing is this particular column represents x is equals to zero this column these entries all these entries oh, okay that is where i'm getting the confusion then. Mm -hmm. so you should treat like this so this is x is equals to zero column this is x is equals to one column this is x is equals to two column and these are y is equals to zero row y is equals to one row y is equals to two row. okay so that is how the join distribution table is designed. Okay, sir. now yeah, I understand. Thank you. Okay, so this will be one by four. This is zero. This is zero. Now the other thing is, once you fill this table, you have to compute the marginals also for checking the dependencies. So for marginals, you know from week one what we have to do. So I just said this column represents x is equals to 0. So if you add all the values in this column, that will tell you the probability that x is equals to 0, which is 1 by 4. And similarly, you add all the columns. This is half. This is 1 by 4. And this is marginal of x. And similarly, if you add these rows, you will get the marginals of y. So this is 1 by 4, half and 1 by 4. And if you finally add this column and this row, you should get 1. So that's how you complete the table. Okay. So now you can simply take one case, this starting case itself. So the joint 0, 0 is 0. But the product of marginals fx0 times fy0 is 1 by 4 times 1 by 4, which is 1 by 60. So from these two itself, the joint is not equals to the product of marginals for x0 and y0. That's it. Done. So for one case, if you can show this, this will imply x and y are not in okay so yes and one quick trick this will be helpful for your exams i suppose uh maybe fact or note so you can use this in exams also if f x y of x y is equals to zero for any x in t x and y in t y then x and y are not independent so maybe this is very much helpful for your uh, exams if you saw a zero in your join distribution table one entry at least one entry is zero then you can straight away conclude x and y are not independent okay yeah so graphically what i visually what i said is you have some columns here some rows here and if you saw one zero here this implies x k y1 y2 and so on yn yes uh, then sir if all is zero then what uh, it is independent no? if all zero uh, all all entry is zero In all entry is zero it will not be a joint distribution table right okay okay 
all entries cannot be zero and extension to that none of the columns are zero all zeros none of the rows will be all zeros because if it is all zeros that means y or x cannot take that particular value and it will be out of the joint table what i meant is you cannot have this kind of uh, joint tables x and y 0 1 2 and 0 1 2 you cannot have something all zeros in one column just a second just a second let me finish you cannot have this because if you have this there is no need to write this one column directly you can discard this column and you can simply write x takes value 0 or 1 0 or 2 similarly with rows also so there will not be any rows with all zeros. If it is all zeros, you can remove that row. Okay. So this is this will not happen. So that is why I can conclude this, this statement strongly. If you have one zero in your joint distribution table, then no need to check. Or you can check that particular entry. And you can straight away conclude that X and Y are not independent. Yes. Aditya. Uh, sir, can you scroll the screen uh, up? Uh, lower, sir, little lower. Still? Uh, no, sir. Down. Down, okay. Still down? Mm -hmm. No, sir, no, sir. I thought I have forgot something. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, any doubts till now, whatever we discussed? Sir, this uh, middle column where you zero zeros. Huh. Uh, I didn't get See, the thing is, uh, you cannot have all zeros in one column and all zeros in one row. Why? Because if you have all zeros, if you compute the marginals, then this would be zero. Because zero is like probability that x takes that particular value is zero. If it is zero, then it will not sit in the range at all. If it is not in the range, it will not come in the joint distribution table. Okay. So in that way, this will not happen in any of the joint distribution tables. Yeah, if it is in a range, then it should have some probability. It will have some probability. If it is have some probability, either one of them should take that particular probability. So all zeros is not possible. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Ravinder. I have a doubt. In the above, you said uh, when uh, first column x, y is 0, hmm. so this is, uh, they are independent. They are not independent. Not independent. Not independent. Okay. And uh, can you scroll down? No. Yeah. Up, up, slightly up. Here you are saying uh, 0, X and Y are not independent. Yes. Okay. 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 It's clear. Okay. Okay. So let me give you an example for independence also. So, uh, I'll just give you the joint table. Yes. Yes. Sir, I have a doubt here. We are defining here random variables uh, among different conditions, no, say x and y something, it's taking some condition. So all these conditions must pertain to only single sample space. Oh, sorry, can you, can you reframe your question? Uh, means, uh, uh, suppose uh, you have to told right now, you have to use this, you have to that. Sorry, 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 I'm missing you. I'm audible. Your voice is becoming low and low. Now, sir? Huh. 
sir in the previous question uh, you have uh, this two coin two times toss is there no coin yes, tossing yeah. for two yes, yes 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 it uh, is uh, the sample uh, space is having actually four outcomes right so we are defining random variables x and y in the same sample space right so we cannot take different sample spaces and define the random variables no sir? no 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 okay only in the same sample space only we can de define yes. n number of random variables or conditions ah right thank you so so here i said i said only two random variables like number of heads in two tosses number of tails in two tosses i can say x represents number of heads or x represents uh, the number of heads in the second toss then that will be zero zero or one either it will be head or one something like that i can define any uh, n n or many infinitely many random variables and those random variables will correspond to the sample space only it will not come from outside or some means only single experiment only up to conserve each experiment is conserved ah. separate itself then contained in itself hmm, hmm. see here experiment is tossing a coin two times and whatever random variable you define that will correspond to this experiment only yes thank you yes robert yeah so if you go to the table hmm. one head one tail yeah they, that one hmm. so x is zero which is head is zero y is one second row tail which is tail one so zero head one tail is one by four right in the sample space you have one possibility where you get a zero head and one tail is that how we see the table where can where did we get zero heads and one tail uh, i'm seeing the second one wouldn't we be reading it that way the second row is head is zero tail is okay but we don't i don't see that in the table here i, I don't see that. would be zero head and one tail no no see the thing is if you are tossing a coin two times each yeah. each time you will get head or tail right yeah. Yeah. and you are tossing it two times that means uh, the number of heads plus the number of tails should be two those are the mm -hmm. only possible cases right you can't have zero heads and one tail if you toss coin two times you understand this okay, if, no, if no, you no. say one tail occurred then definitely one head has occurred because you toss it coin two times Right. Yeah. Thank that you. is very easy. Yes. Uh, sir, like the earlier person said, uh, that uh, uh, in cases where the random variables are defined, what about the cases in which the random variables are defined on different sample spaces? Will they always be independent? Or is there a concept of independence in that case? I don't think see, there is no need to talk. If the experiments are different, if the sample spaces are different, then there is no point of talking about dependencies. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, one, uh, maybe many doubts are coming from the table. Hmm. Okay, can you please go back to that uh, first table when we narrated the, uh, the distribution table? Here, uh, yeah, here, here. Uh, is it a better approach to go kind of row wise or column wise how we should actually fill up the fill in the ah, right see the thing is look at the experiment first what is the experiment you are tossing the coin only two times you can list down the sample space of the experiment uh -huh. right uh -huh. so what, what there are only four possible cases in your sample space right? four elements in your sample spaces right Right, right, right. If your sample space is very small, something uh -huh. like this, uh -huh. then write it in this way. Write it in this way and identify the possible cases. So, okay. possible okay. cases are 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2. Right. Only these three are possible. Others uh -huh. are not possible. So, in your okay. joint table, there will be nine entries, out uh -huh. of which you have probabilities only for three. Uh, so, the first three feel are, okay. okay, okay. If the sample space is small, Okay, something like if you can write down tossing two times, tossing three times also you can write it down. So if you toss the coin three times, you will have eight elements in your sample space. Right? Uh, right, right. Uh, so there also you can list them. But what if you are tossing the coin ten times? Okay, okay. So then you, just, hmm. you can't you can't list out all the outcomes, possible outcomes, and you cannot draw this. Also, joint distribution table. 
you cannot completely fill the joint distribution table. It's 10 cross 10, 100, right? But there is a way to get uh, x is equals to something, gamma y is equals to something, can be deduced into tune. Okay, in a better way. So we will see those things. Yes, sir. Can we move forward? Yes, yes. I am moving forward. So I think we should move forward from here. Uh, let's come back when we do problems. Okay. So this is one good example. You can cross check. This is independent to each other. So this is the joint distribution table given to you. So what you have to do is check x and y are independent or not. So this is a good exercise to try. So write down the marginals and check for each entry uh, whether the joint is equals to product of marginals or not. So you have to check for nine values, nine different values, nine values, nine entries. Here. Okay. So it will satisfy. And answer to this is yes. Yes, they will be independent to each other. Can we say because it does not have a zero entry? It no, is no, 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 no. That's not what I meant here. We have to check every entry ah, by the have to check. product of see, marginal. See, this is only implies, not by implies. Okay. So if it is zero, it is for sure independent. Uh, but not independent. Not, not necessarily. Uh, so if there is no zero, it does not imply that they are independent. Okay. okay. So, yes. So that's about independence. I spent uh, much more time on this independence because this will act as the very base stepping stone for the most important and most haunting topic for today, which is I guess many would have guessed this. Independent, identically distributed random variables. In short, it is called IID. It's just three letters, but uh, trust me, this will haunt you till week 12. Not even week 12, this will haunt you for your life long if you want to become a data scientist. Okay. And quick note, uh, uh, this independent identically distributed is not independent random variables. Okay. Independent random variables is different from independent identically distributed random. So these IIDs are different from independence. Difference in the sense, I will I will explain you. Wow. See, independent random variables is a small part of this IIDs, but that's not the only condition required to be IID. Okay, so what this this independent identically distributed means is, from the words itself, you can easily guess. The first first thing says it need to be independent. So independent, the condition is we know just now we saw. The joint should be equal to product of marginals. Okay, I think I need uh, one more from independence. See, this is independence between two random variables. If I have n random variables, how does the independence look? So if I have n random variables, then I say these n random variables are independent if this holds. So x1 to xn are independent if again the joint is equals to product of marginals in the individual marginals. And the main condition you should not forget this should hold for all xi's belonging to txi so for each and every x in xi it should satisfy this condition need to be satisfied 
and similarly not independent means you should uh, you should come up with some excise such that this condition is failed okay so this is required so this is just the generalization of independence uh, why this is because uh, so this ident independent identically distributed random variables so we'll add that random variables also so this iid is we talk on random variables and independent need to be there and identically distributed need to be there so we just focused on independent till now independent is for two case this is the thing and for n random variables case fx 1 fx2 fxn of x1 to xn should be equal to fx1 of x1 fx2 of x2 and so on fxn of x so for independent thing you just have to satisfy this condition so this is first condition in order to be iid so the second condition is this identically distributed so what do i mean by identically distributed means is if this random variables x1 to xn has the same marginal pmfs so what does that mean this f x1 of x1 is equal to f x2 of x2 is equals to f x3 of x3 and so on so the marginals so this this is the marginal of x1 random variable this is the marginal of x2 random variable so same or identical so we say same or identical marginal distribution so what does that mean is it all the random variables x1 to xn we are considering x1 to xn random variables all these random variables first of all they have to be independent so that's the first condition adding to that in addition to that whatever the marginal pmf that x1 has the same marginal pmf x2 should have the same marginal pmf x3 should have similarly the same marginal pmf x n should have so again what do i mean by same here uh, two things the range of x1 should be equal to range of x2 should be equals to and so on range of xn and the corresponding probabilities so whatever the probabilities that each of the possible value of x1 takes that should be equal to the same probabilities so probabilities also should be same probabilities of each xi in tx1 should be same as again probabilities of each xi in tx2 so all the probabilities also should be same so for example let me take an example what i meant is if x1 is following uh, x1 takes uh, 1 2 3 with probabilities 1 by 2 1 by 4 1 by 4 so if x1 distribution is like this then x2 should also be like this okay so again so i'll give you few random variables here let's decide which of them are iids and which of them are not so let me define x1 again x1 to be 0 1 2 3 with probabilities 1 by 3 1 by 6 one by four and one by four yes any doubt sir can you please go of ones okay still 
Yeah, this only. Hmm. Any doubt? No. Then, okay. Uh, see, if you want the previous notes, just open a YouTube to the side of you and mute it so that you can have, uh, you can see the screen there also. Okay, uh, so this is the first random variable. So this is the second random variable I'm giving. So one, two, three, four, with probabilities, one by three, one by six, one by four, and one by four. The third random variable is zero, one, two, three, or three, two, one, zero with probabilities uh, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 6, 1 by 3 and the fourth random variable is like this. 3, 2, 1, 0, 1 by 3, 1 by 6, 1 by 4 and Now out of these four random variables, can you tell me which two random variables are independent? Okay, let's leave out independent. Just tell me which of the two random variables are identically distributed. X1 and one X3. And three. X1 yes. and X3. Yes. Correct. So why X2 is not identically distributed with X1 or X3? Range 0. Range is not same. Thing. Range is not same. So x so x1, x3 are identical to each other because you see the range of x1 is 0, 1, 2, 3. Range of x3 is also 0, 1, 2, 3. I just written it in reverse order. And the corresponding probability is also. So 0 with probability 1 by 3 for x1. Similarly, 0 with probability 1 by 3 for x3. So like this. So 2 with probability 1 by 4 for x1, 2 with probability 1 by 4 for x3. Even the corresponding probabilities should also be same. Now, so why x2 is not? x2 has different range. So range different from x1 and x3. Why x4 is not identically distributed with x1 and x3? Probabilities are not same, sir. Probabilities, corresponding probabilities are different here. Yes, sir. So the range is same for X4. You see, X4 also the range is 0, 1, 2, 3. But the probability that uh, 3 occurs for X4 is 1 by 3, whereas for X1 is 1 by 4. So the probabilities are different. Even though ranges are same, probabilities are different. So X4 has different probability. Okay, so therefore, X4 and X2 are not identically distributed with X1 and X2. So now people uh, should get the understanding of identically distributed means. So the value should be same and uh, the probability should be same. Probabilities for that particular values also should be same. Mm. So if these two are same, then we call they have same or identical marginal PMF. So this random variables x1 to xn have identical marginal PMF. That's if these two are happening, then we say that. So that's the second condition required for independent identically distributed random variables. So the first condition is independence. The second condition is having the identical marginal PMFs. Having the identical marginal PMFs means the ranges should be same for each of the random variable. Also, the corresponding probability should be same for each of the random variables. Should we call it range or should we call it value? Like what is... Range, uh, range, I mean, all the values also. Yeah, value, okay. Uh. Sir, if we try to make a table, then it should be a square matrix and their PMF uh, should be same. Then it will be IID. Ah, uh, its PMF okay. should be same. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So, yes, so now we have uh, many tools, let's fix the machine.
So uh, we have this this thing first. So for IID, for IIDs, we have this x1 to xn of this joint is actually the product of marginals. So from the first condition, I have this. But if I use the second condition here, so this is actually equals to this. This is actually equals to this. So everything is equal. It's just the product of n equal things. So I can simply replace all of them with x1. It doesn't change much. Right? As the second condition says that they have equal marginal or identical marginal uh, distributions. So the marginal distribution of x1 is same as x2. So that means we have this with us. fx1 of x1 is equals to this, is equals to this. All, of, all these terms are equal. So we are just multiplying equal terms n times. So if I do that, what will I get? If I multiply 2 n times, what will I get? Will it be 2n? Yes. 2n or? Sir, 2 to the power n. Power n. Power n. So it, it will generate the power. So this will simply be fx1 of x1 whole power n. So in future, what we do is, instead of uh, writing this subscript 1 every time, what we say is x1 to xn simply follows iid x what does it mean is all these random variables are independent to each other and it follows the distribution that x follows so each and every random variable x1 x2 xn follows x the same distribution whatever the distribution x follows x1 also follows the same distribution, x2 also follows the same distribution, xn also follows the same distribution. Uh, so, so very, very important. Uh. So, sir, it is like uh, this x1 to xn follows iid given uh, it is like a geometric progression over... Whatever, whatever. If x is following some binomial, mm -hmm. then x1 follows binomial, x2 follows binomial, xn follows binomial. In addition to that, when we say iid, mm -hmm. all of them are independent to each other there is uh, we, we we shouldn't mention or there is no need to mention independence separately okay sir Understood. once we said iid they are independent to each other and also they will have the same identical distribution okay, okay. sir. thank you, uh, thank so, you. Uh, i i think uh, there is an example uh, in the lecture also let me uh, anyone has any example you can provide it to me or we will solve activity also fine Shall we solve the activity question here? Activity, sir. Which one uh, would you guys prefer? Activity, sir. Activity? Activity, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, just a second. Let me open portal. Uh, which question? If anyone has opened uh, portal, you can give me question okay so it open to me so let me solve question number two question number two looks fine to everyone activity which yes, activity sir. activity 2.2 .2. question number two okay so what we did, remember this, and I can simply write this also, whole to the power n. Okay. So the whole joint thing, how many number of random variables I have, instead of looking at it as a joint, if I simply know they are IIDs, I can cut down it to one particular marginal distribution. If you know one marginal distribution, you just have to take it power n and done. Okay, so no need to draw that big table or we can't even draw if n is greater than 3, greater than or equals to 3, you can't even draw the table. So even the n is 100 also, you don't have to worry. If you have IID, you are, you are in a very comfortable position. Okay, so the question 2, 
says uh, it has 10 random variables that follows iid geometric 1 by 5. So what does this uh, say is explicitly if you want to write down this says x1 to x10 are independent to each other. So this is one, one thing. The second thing is x1 follows geometric 1 by 5, x2 follows geometric 1 by 5 and so on the x10 will also follow geometric 1 by 5. Okay. So this is what it says. See the single line says this, this two statements collectively. So that's the power uh, that three letters has IID. Okay. So now what we have to find? We have to find the probability that so this is what we have to find. The probability that x1 is greater than 10, x2 is greater than 10, and so on, x10 is greater than 10. So that is what I have to find. So now, you know this is joint. So this is just the joint. And since I have it is independent to each other, this, this first condition, if I impose this independence to each other, how can I write this? Probability of x1 greater than 10 into probability of x2 greater than up to x to the x10 to the greater than 10. Right. So I can simply write it as product of marginals. Right. So this is, this is the condition I use. Now I wanted to use this all x1 to x10 has the same distribution. So instead of writing it 10 times, all of them are same. So x1 or x2 or x10, everything has the same distribution. If everything has the same distribution, it will have the same probabilities actually for any of the event. So I can simply write this as probability that x1 greater than 10 whole power 10. Can I write this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, no. Yes, yes sir. I just use the second condition. Everything has the same distribution. So even if it is x1 or x2 or x10, it doesn't matter. All of them are same. So I can drop off that one also, but even though let's keep it up. So now I have to find this. And I know x, what x1 follows. x1 follows geometric, geometric. Of 1 by 5. Right? Oh. Now this looks like I can write this uh, probability separately. This is probability that x1 is equals to 11. So, so I can write down the range first of all. Writing range is very, very important. So what is the range of x1? You can take from 1 to, mm -hmm. 1 to infinite. So geometric distribution has 3 and 10, 11, 12, 13 and so on to infinite. Now we wanted the probability that x1 is greater than 10. So what are the possible values? 11 and x1 takes 12, x1 takes 13 and so on and so on till infinite. And there is whole power 10. Do not forget. Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, now what is the probability that x1 takes 11? So that means x1 is a geometric random variable you just have to always keep it keep this in mind and x1 is equals to 11 means you are getting your first success on the 11th try so that means you got 10 failures followed by one success getting 10 failures is 4 by 5 whole power 10 multiplied by 1 by 5 is this clear Yes, sir. This it thing. is just formula one minus. Ah, you can yeah one minus p times p p okay. one minus p whole power k, k minus, minus one. one. Yes, sir. yes. Any doubt? 
okay so this so is can you explain the last part please which one this one uh yes sir okay so you sir know, i have one, one doubt uh, uh, if it is uh, its power should be k minus 1 then it uh, shouldn't be 9 4 by 5 to the power 9 why this is 11 right here k is 11 oh okay 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 sir. so pmf of geometric distribution what is the pmf of geometric distribution p x is equals to k so you are getting k times success so that means uh, something like failure 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 and so on failure and the k the time is a success so that means you are getting k minus 1 failures followed by one success and each trial is independent to each other so for getting a failure you see the parameter here there is 1 by 5 1 by 5 is the probability of success so for getting a failure first failure is 4 by 5 and the second time also getting failure is 4 by 5 and so on k minus 1th time also getting failure is 4 by 5 and finally the kth time you get the success is 1 by 5 getting a success is 1 by 5 so, so this will um, be 4 by 5 whole power k minus 1 times 1 by 5 yes is it, is it the same thing that memoryless property of geometry uh, i didn't bring memoryless or anything here okay okay <laughs> i just written pmf of geometric distribution so what is the pmf of geometric distribution that's it Uh, maybe this is tilted so my question is very simple if x is following geometric p what is probability that x is equals to k is this this 1 minus p whole power k minus 1 times p yes hmm. so here p is 1 by 5 And k is eleven. So just substitute it. You are going to get this. For the next term, getting the success in the twelfth time, getting the first success in the twelfth time. So that means eleven failures followed by a success. So like this, it goes. All power ten is there. And you, if you see, four by five whole power ten. is common in all the terms so let me write down the other terms so the other term is next terms are uh, x1 is equals 13 is first success you get at 13th place so that means 12 failures followed by a success next term is 13 failures followed by a success so that is probability that x1 is equals to 14 and this goes and goes goes so if you see each and every term has 4 by 5 whole power 10 and 1 by 5 so you can take that common So four by five whole power ten and one by five. If you take that common out, you will be left with one plus one by five has gone. Four by five whole power ten is gone. Left is four by five. In the second term, in the third term, one by five is gone out. Four by five whole power ten is gone out. So you are you will be left with four by five whole square. And in the next term, you will be having four by five whole cube and so on, and whole power ten. So now this looks like a geometric progression. If you people know what is geometric progression, it's just a geometric progression. Or if you don't know, again you can treat this as S four by five whole cube and so on. You just multiply four by five to the S. in this term if you multiply what will happen the first term will become 4 by 5 you can write that 4 by 5 here the second term 4 by 5 multiplied by 4 by 5 4 by 5 whole square so it just shifts you will get all the next terms that's it if you know this i can directly skip so if you just subtract these two this will get cancelled out everything will get cancelled out the left side will be 1 by 5s and the right side will be 1 this one so from here you can get s is equals to 5 okay if you know this geomet uh, how the geometric progression works and what is the sum of the geometric progressions it's 1 by 1 minus r here r is 4 by 5 
if you do that also you will get uh, five as the answer yes aditya uh, sir can you please explain the subtraction part again i missed it i, I see i am not doing any magic here i have this i just took this particular sum as s sum sum value i just multiplied left hand side and right hand side by 4 by 5 Okay, left okay, side four by five and right side also four by five, so that will get multiplied and each of the term will push to the right slightly right. So four by five multiplied by one is four by five. Four by five multiplied by four by five will be four by five whole square. So like this, it just shifts. Sir, can you okay, please show okay. this one by formula? Ah, formula is if if it is geometric progression, like something like this, one plus r plus r square. Plus R cube and so on. If you have this, then this sum is equals to one by one minus R. Okay. And sometimes okay, uh, this will also help you. One plus R plus R square plus R cube and so on till R power n. This will be R power n plus one. Minus one divided by R minus one. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank Or you. Or one minus R power n plus one by one minus R. If your R is less than one. Okay. So these are ah condition is R should be less than. One. Then only this will convert. Oh, th sorry, I don't want to bring that up. So these are the formulas, and this is ultimate uh, answer is this is five. If this is five, this and this will get cancelled out, and we will be left with four by five whole power ten inside. So this inside, and there is whole power ten. This will be four by five whole power hundred. This is point eight whole power hundred. So I did uh, these examples very explicitly because if you see what is happening exactly in each of the question. Then you can solve the other questions very easy. So that's my uh, main motive, main intention in explaining everything in detail. So is this okay? Yes. Yes, yes uh, Abdullah. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask this. We took it from x x one is equal to eleven. So is it hmm. because they have said it is greater than ten? Right, right. See, when can we need probability that x one is greater than ten? Ha, huh, okay. Right. What are the possible values for x one that are greater than ten? That's the probability we need. Okay, fine. And if it says greater or equal to ten, then we have to take ten. Then you also. should start from ten. Now uh, that's a good okay. question. So if it is greater than or equals to ten, so ten should also come into the picture. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sir, ha. Huh. Is uh, this uh, independent identical distribution? Hmm. Uh, you are saying it is very important. Uh, right. Do Do you remember any example like just to correlate, like in, uh, like uh, in real time, whenever we deal with data, any example hmm. do you? Ah, huh, see, if you draw samples from data, if you draw a sample. So those samples are IIDs. So that's what we are going to do in future. So we will simply say draw n samples from the data, and it implies that they are independent and identically distributed. See, samples are random variables. You have a data mm -hmm. uh, with some ten thousand entries inside sitting there. Okay, uh, some ten thousand values you think. So you draw some some data point out of the ten thousand. Is it random or is it constant? Will that be random or constant? It will be random, right? Ah, random. So the first sample you draw from the data is a random variable, and the second sample you draw from the uh, data is another random variable. But data follows a distribution. Correct. Right. There may be some pattern, yeah. Ah, ah. There will be some pattern for the data when you draw a sample. That sample is coming from that particular distribution, right? Uh, so that particular sample will also follow the same distribution. Okay. 
uh, so and if you i draw some 100 examples let, let let's just say i'm generating i have 100 uh, balls in a bin and i'm just randomly picking one ball and throwing it back inside okay so mm -hmm. yeah, you treat like that that's a sample ball drawing a ball is a sample okay so since i am drawing from the distribution uh, complete 100 balls so i can i can get any any ball for the first sample right mm -hmm, right uh, so the first sample will more or less follow the same distribution what the whole data is following so if you, the samples are independent and identically distributed and they follow the same distribution that the whole population follows so we will see that so the thing is you have a bin and there are some data points okay and you draw a sample out of it and name it x1 i just named it x1 because the sample which is going to come is a random random variable right Mm. and the next sample i draw is x2 next sample i draw is x3 and so on next sample i draw is uh, and so on n okay. or 100 okay all these are coming from this whole distribution whole data so this mm. has some distribution if it is coming x1 the sample is coming from this distribution it can be anything from the distribution whole whole thing So the same distribution it follows. So I mean, in real data, if we say, if we uh, know that the sample is following the IID, that means the population also will follow the IID. There is no IID that? in the population. See, population is X. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the samples you draw from the population are IID with respect to. okay okay you draw samples right and those samples comes from the distribution so therefore the samples which you are say okay let me take very small example okay zero one bernoulli case so your x your data follows bernoulli from 1 by 3 okay and you are drawing samples from this distribution randomly you are drawing samples okay so the first sample what can be the distribution of the first sample either it can be 0 or 1 right right, right. Uh, and can you guess uh, with what probability it can be 0 and what probability it can be 1 it is uh, it is uh, 0.5 right point 1 uh, by point. 3 that is 1 by 3 okay yeah 1 by 3 okay so with the uh, probability of 2 by 3 x1 takes 0 and with probability 1 by 3 x1 takes 1 right if i draw a sample out of this particular distribution similarly if i draw more samples one sample is independent of the other sample so the second sample which i draw will not be dependent on the first sample what the outcome of first sample is right so these all will follow Uh, these all are iids with respect to x okay so this is one example good example which you should remember samples drawn from a distributions are always iids okay 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 uh, so that's the most important thing and the next thing uh, which i want to discuss is uh, a function of a random variable and i think uh, with this i think the most difficult topics are touched i suppose function of a random variable okay in particular random variables in particular i wanted to discuss max of x comma y min of x comma y and the sum sum is okay let me start with sum so that you will get intuition of max and min and before going forward and discussing these things 
let me spend let us spend some time on understanding what this max of x comma y means is so first of all tell me whether this is a function of x and y is this a function of x y yes sir yes yes sir no yes yes sir yes sir ah, yes yes see what this uh, function does is it takes it's it's like function where it takes two inputs x and y and it gives out the output is it will just give us the whichever is the maximum so if you treat your function as some box machine so this is a function you just input x and y in, into this machine so let me say this is the machine of okay let's say f so you, this is our input if you input this what this function does is it it sees the value of x it sees the value of y and it just compares the values between x and y and whichever is the maximum it throws out so here uh, it will throw out x if x is maximum if x is greater than y or it throws out y as the output so this will be output if uh, y is greater than or equal to x so if if they are equal then it it can throw any one of it so if, if x is equals to y so that means either you throw out x or y it's same okay so that's this function so this function is max function okay so as i said this let me give you uh, uh, let I, let me ask one question here uh, for this particular function i just gave input as x is equals to 5 and y is equals to 6 as my input what would i expect as output 6 6 6 6 because it just compares 5 and 6 which is greater 6 is greater so it gives 6 as out so now i define a new random variable y for my output so even output is also a random variable if you see see this is 4 and this is 10 then this output is 10 if it is 10 and y is 9 then this output is 10 right so here it is y here it is y but here it is x so if x and y are random variables this we know function of a random variable is a random variable so what i do is i just define uh, not y i just define this since that max is a function of x and y and the output or uh, whatever the output i am going to get is random and i can define it with a random variable so this is how i define my new random variable z which is max of x comma y okay so this random variable z takes x if x is greater than y it takes y if y is greater than or equal to x if i have to write it explicitly this is how i write or i can simply write it like this now let us talk about Uh, i will just give you the visual interpretation of how do you compute the max of uh, these things or pmf of z so our goal this is our goal now from here so we need pmf of z so in particular i just need probability that z is equals to some k so what is this in anyway. and what we know we know uh, the distribution of x so if i say distribution of x we know the range and the probabilities the pmf of x and we know y dy fy of y so these these things we know and we are interested to find the pmf so let's suppose say without loss of generality for any range it works but for my 
uh, for our understanding purpose let us say tx or the range of uh, that uh, random variable x takes is 0 1 2 3 and so on okay similarly So this is our assumption, as you. Okay. So if you get intuition for this, then other ranges you can actually work it out. So now since the ranges are like this, I'll just draw the joint table. So once I know the ranges, I can actually draw the joint table. And okay, let me draw the draw the joint table. Okay, I guess this is sufficient. Let me just copy this. So this is the joint table. The join table will look somewhat like this. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this is also 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. And this will be some probability P0, 0. This is some probability P1, 0. P2, 0. P3, 0. So some probabilities. Right? P0, uh, 1. P0, 2. So these are just probabilities, okay? I just gave variables. Don't worry about why. So this is how the joint table looks like. Okay. And we need max of this. For this, let me just draw another table. But this table is not joint PMF. Rather, the entries are max of x comma y. Okay. So the same x, y stands as it is. and so on but this time the entries are this is not to note entries are z which is max of x comma y so whichever is maximum that value i will just enter here so for 0 0 the entry will be what is the max of 0 comma 0 so this is max of 0 comma 0 Simple. Zero. Oh. Okay. So these are not probabilities. Again, the joint table is this, but I'm just writing another table where the entries are max of x comma y, whichever is maximum, I will just put it as the entry. So this will be zero. So now this entry will be for this so x is 1 and y is 0 so what is max of 1 comma 0 1 1 right uh, similarly i will fill this table so what will be this entry 2 so it two. is max of 2 comma 0 which is 2 so 2 comma 0 is 2 so similarly, this will be 3, 4, here if I come, it is 1, here, yes, yes, 2, yes, someone raise the hand, I suppose, yes, Subrat. Sir, the ranges are of x and y and the entries of uh, z, which is the function of the function of maximum of x and y, right? Right, right. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. So this is 2. This is 3. So now tell me this entry. 3. So what three. will be this? So this is x is 3 and y is 2. Yes. So it is max of 3 comma 2 mm -hmm. and it will be 3. Okay. So similarly, I will just quickly fill this out. Let me know if I am wrong. This will be 4. This will be 2. 2. 4. 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 
and this will go and so on. Is this correct? Yes, sir. Huh. Yes. Sir. Okay. So now, can you see some pattern here? Zeros, ones, twos inside the table. So, uh, so the lower lower triangle y is greater. Hmm. So can you can you see something here? So some sort of contour lines. Can I draw some contour lines? Uh, upside pattern, sir. Upside, uh, open rectangle upside. Yes, sir. Open yes, sir. Right. So this this is what we observe. See for zero. This is how zero. For one. For two. Okay. For three. Yes. Sir, what is the meaning of this open rectangle upside? See, this is how it is. L L inverted. So this is. It's the name of this. Ah no, it's not a name. It's just for understanding purpose. Okay. See, I might I sometimes might use words which are not in dictionary of mathematics. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so the thing is, you see these red red lines here. So this and this, there is some pattern. So the next next thing I can predict. So this will be fives. All all the entries on this line will be fives, and the next line will be six. So similarly, there will be a line for k. Right. So there will be and so on. There will be a line. That is for k. So this is for zero. This is for one. This is for two, three, four, five, six, and so on. There will be some line for k. So this zero is like z is zero, and this one is like z is one. So z is one in these three cases. Either x is zero and y is one. This case. Either x is one and y is zero. This case. And x and y both, both are one. So all these three cases, my z will be one. Similarly, if I go and see for two, I have five possible cases where z can take two. So all these five cases are that zero two, one two, two zero two one, and two two. So in all the five cases, by max of x comma y will be two. So that means all these things represents z. So I need. The PMF of Z. See, always remember what is our goal. Our goal is to find the PMF of Z. So that means I have to find the probability that Z is equals to K. So for that, in order to getting there, let me let us just work it out for probability that Z is equals to zero. When can Z be zero? So there is only one possible case. When can Z be zero? Only case is this. So that case is x is zero and y is zero, and the probability that x is zero and y is zero is p zero zero. So probability that Z is equal to zero is p zero zero, which is entries entries on. Z is equals to zero lines. So that means uh, Z is equals to zero lines is this. So the entry is only one entry, and the probability corresponding probability is p zero zero. And if I talk about probability that Z is equals to one, which I can have either x is zero and y is one, plus probability that x is one and y is zero. Plus probability that x is one and y is one. So I got three values because you see on the line z is equals to one, on the line z is equals to one, I have three entries. So all these three entries correspond to z is equals to one. So three possible cases, and for that I have to add all the probabilities corresponding probabilities. So this is p one one. So these three, some of these three probabilities will correspond to z is equals to. So sum of three these three probabilities correspond to z is equals to one. So okay, let let's make things little complicated. Let us write down for z is equals to four. 
So let's go back to the table and see z is equals to 4 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So there are 9 possible cases where my z will be equals to 4. The, those cases are either x can be 0 and y can be 4. Okay. Or x can be 1 and y can be 4. Or x can be 2, y can be 4. Or x can be 3 and y can be 4. Okay. So these are four possible cases. In addition to that, not only this, there are still. So these, these four cases are this. This x is 0 and y is 4, x is 1 and y is 4, x is 2 and y is 4, x is 3 and y is 4. And other cases are probability that x is equals to 4 and y is equals to 0 plus x is equals to 4 and y is equals to 1 plus x is equals to 4 and y is equals to 2 plus x is equals to 4 and y is equals to 3. And these four cases are these four x is being 4, x is being the maximum value and y being any value less than the maximum value. Okay, And the final case, the intersection of two lines, the point here is the final one, x is equal to 4 as well as y is equal to 4. So these are the nine possible cases. So now observe clearly. I'll write this down in a very shorthand notation. This, instead of writing down all these things explicitly, for the first one, I will write it as summation. I just wanted to use the summation. It's just summing of four values. I is equals to one, or sorry, I is equals to zero to 3, probability that x is equals to i comma y is equals to 4. So can I write it like this? Yes. Yes. So, so, so I am just wanted to use the summation thing and I just wanted to write it in one, one line, one simple expression. So all these four can be written like this. And the next four I can write it like this from j is equals to 0 to 3 probability that x is equals to 4 and y is equals to j this time can i yes sir. right and the last one i will write it as it is x is equals to 4 and y is equals to 4 so now you see for z is equals to 4 for the first expression, you have y is equals to 4. So that means in order to have maximum value 4, in both of the x and y, one should be 4 and other can be anything less than 4. So that all the possible cases is this. This will take care of those possible cases. And the next thing will take care of x being 4 and y being anything less than 4. And the last case is like both of them are equal to 4. Okay, so now observe clearly. I just replace four with k, any k. What should I write? So the first expression will become summation i is equals to zero two. Till where I can go? K minus one. K minus one. K minus one. For four, we are going till three. So it should be k minus one x is equals to i comma y is equals to it should be k. k so this says one the random variable y is k and x takes any value less than k so maximum will be k so similarly summation j is equals to 0 k minus 1 probability that x is equals to k comma y is equals to 0 plus probability that x is equals to k comma y is equals to k. So I think this is the expression.
far we are done uh, people who are wondering what else we are done here so we got the pmf so this is the pmf of z what is z z is max of x comma once you have pmf you can compute any probabilities so you can compute probability that z greater than 10 or z greater than k or z less than k any probabilities you can compute okay so let me talk about this and let's end this see i think in class professor has explained min with these things and this is what uh, this is how it is for max if it had been min how will the how will this contour lines look any guesses or the table looks okay you try it out if just opposite of this uh, for min if, uh, if it is min then you know it is a function again it takes minimum of it minimum of x comma y i think if you have understood this clearly you can try working out for min of x comma y. any doubts here any confusions any anywhere how we deduce no, sir. this formula no, sir. no right okay so now work it out for min for yourself and it will be fun i tell you that i can tell you that okay so work it out for uh, min for min i'll just give you this thing it will be like this if you try to draw the lines you will get these lines like this okay so uh, try it out by yourself so this will yeah. be z equals to zero ah are we uh, going to discuss anything new or you are done for the no 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 i think uh, the most important topics i discussed okay from week two okay, okay these are the most important okay. topics and other topics are also important for week two but these topics are important for you to progress in the course this yeah. will come in the next weeks also yeah certain, and you certain, huh. certain topics are uh, very uh, clearly uh, clarified i understood actually it was really nice <laughs> oh thanks okay so you try it out this so this, i will leave this as an exercise okay so try it out for min of x comma y and you, you will see the lines are like this okay so then what else yeah. yes thank you sir okay uh thank you so much uh, for joining and have a great day my school yeah thank you yes, thank you yes, sir yes uh, super sir can you give a brief on how to do the sum or should i not uh, sum is again a function, right? Sum, what does function sum does? It takes x and y into the function, and what it does is it adds the values x plus y. It makes it x plus y. Okay. And similarly, just do whatever we discussed till now. You just draw yes. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. You write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. You write. And what you do is you just Instead of doing max or min, you just do the sum. So 0 plus 0, 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2. You write it down and see what is happening. Can you come up with some pattern, good looking pattern you can judge? Okay. 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 Uh, sir, one, one more thing. Uh, just uh, to understand, like, uh, say, Z more than 3 or less than 5, like that. In those cases, I have to add this expression for 1, 2, 3. Or maybe we have to. Uh, ha, so that's what once you. From one ha, once you hmm. know the PMF, see if the questions yeah. are like, uh, if they ask you to find three less than z less than five, or less than hmm. or equals to, so then what does hmm. it imply? That implies z is equals to three plus z is equals to four plus z is equals to five, right? Right. Ha, now individually, you know what what are the probabilities? You just have to add them. Okay. Okay. It's like three three okay. lines you have to add. Three different lines. Right. And uh, sir, one more thing which is not related to this. Uh, yeah. Regarding discourse actually. Last yeah. time also we discussed that. In discussion forum we are not able to join. And uh, we uh, have several times uh, shared you, our email IDs also. 
are you an iid uh, j uh, through uh, so are you admitted no, to that no IIT? no 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 it no. is i'm i'm in uh, this thing only I okay mean. okay uh, just just a second let me take my pen just give me your mail id i'll just cross check whether you have been added or no yes just to note that sure so you can orally you can just tell me the roll number or you can privately no i 22, don't uh, no i'm giving you 22f 3001318 okay let me check this are there anyone who is facing the same uh, issue okay okay uh, sir thank you yeah sir i'm the phone doubt in activity question sir activity question okay uh, 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 actually it is from activity 11 sir last okay okay, okay. tutorial one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll just take that i'll just take that uh, the other one who raised the hand abdullah what's your doubt okay okay uh, others can drop off i'll just uh, spend a minute or so with uh, vaishnavi right? is that correct yeah okay sir in so, that uh, what like what is the difference in question 2 and question 3 sir ha ah, question 2 is asking about the probability mass function value the pmf value small f okay. okay and capital and f is cumulative distribution right? cumulative distribution mm -hmm. okay okay so okay okay, okay that's okay. it we had given the names for the statistics uh, tuition for mentoring but we've not got anything so far for it you wanted mentoring or you want to do the mentoring no 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 we had paid for to get the uh, for the uh, classes ha 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 so so those those things are uh, in progress it will start soon i i guess a okay. uh, few sessions a uh, few sessions with few people has already been started but we are starting mm -hmm. in batches so okay. you will get it you will get it okay thank you sir okay okay hello okay. sir Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, I just have a quick question. So I actually messaged you in the chat. Uh, the activity question number uh, four, hmm. and it was from week two, but I couldn't solve. So okay. can you please help uh, me? Okay, just a second. Let me just look at that. Yeah, Jay Sonia, I just noted your uh, mail ID. I'll just cross check uh, whether you have been added to that. Uh, activity two point four. Yes. Question number. Question number. Question number four. Oh, it is about the even number and odd number. Question number ah, four. Good. I was expecting this question actually, but Nam pointed this out. Uh, okay, I'll just I'll just spend a moment there. Is my screen still visible? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Priyanka, any doubt before I start two point four? Tutorial two question number five. Oh, you have doubts. Okay, wait then. Uh, let me let me let me just go uh, with the two point four question number four and then. Okay. So this is AQ two point four question four, which says uh, X is geometric P. we have uh, defined a new function is that f of x see since it is given f of x you might confuse that it is pmf but it's a function so for our understanding purposes let me call it as g of x here okay so that would be that would differentiate our pmf with this function so this actually takes x by 2 If x is even, right, and x plus one by two, if x is odd, 
and what it is given we have defined a new rad we have to find the probability that fx f of x is equals to k where k is the range of f of x okay. so we have to find find uh, g of x is equals to k and probability i guess find the probability that g of x is equals to k which is nothing but if i treat this g of x as a new random variable it's a function of x so if i say this is some y okay so what we want is uh, basically we wanted probability that y is equals to k now let's just go back and understand small small mathematics stuff see y is equals to k in order to get this what are the possible values that x can have any real number okay so so for what values of x y will be k okay uh, instead of k let me start with very simple one so in order to get y to be one what should be my x values so for what values of x i will get y as one see you see y is it defined can... as x by 2 okay. if x is even and x plus 1 by 2 if x is odd it can be either 2 or 3 either 2 or 3 3 uh, no it's 1 1 so in ascending order if x is 1 or x is 2 so i will write x values here one value here if x is 1 or x is 2 i will get y as 1 correct similarly if i want y to be 2 what all possible values are there for x 3 and 4 3 and 4 good similarly 10 20 and 19 19 and 20 20 uh, now k k and k minus 1 2k and 2k minus 1 2k minus 1 good okay right 2k is even if x is equals to 2k as 2k is even y will be 2k by 2 which will be k uh, now tell me what how can i write this probability that y is equals to k in terms of x can i write this either x can take 2k plus x can take 2k minus 1 or since yes. it is or both the probability sum of two probabilities will be the total probability for k mm -hmm. are you convinced still here yes yes uh, okay from here it is very simple you know the distribution of x what is x geometric geometric p right uh, if mm -hmm. it is geometric p what is the probability that x is 2k Uh, p into one minus p power two k minus one. So this is one minus p power two k minus one into p. And what is the probability that x takes two k minus one? Uh, p into one minus p power two k minus two. Two k minus two times p. Okay. So okay. now take 1 minus p whole power 2k minus 2 common because that is yeah. common in both the things and p i can take p also common so if i take 1 minus p whole power 2k minus 2 and p common what is left here left just 1 minus p 1 minus p and what is left here 1 so this will be 1 minus p whole power 2k minus 2 times p times 2 minus p okay that's it that's yeah, the answer that's clear. Right? Yes. okay great 
what's the next question may i sir mm -hmm. uh, uh, from practice assignment second and fifth question sir no someone asked tutorial in between no? oh, okay okay sir tutorial 2 question number 5 Okay, just a second. Someone gave me another roll number. Let me write the roll number also. Oh, that is twenty-one eight three. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, yes, go ahead, Priya. Tutorial. Tutorial two, two question number five. tutorial to question we would have provided you feedback with that right what's the problem so tell me where exactly you are facing the problem okay x1 x2 x3 is our iid random variables with the geometric probability mass function this find the value of probability that max of x i is less than or equal to 2 So the, is that the question? Hello. Yes, sir. Tutorial two Q five. So it is given that x one, x two, and x three are IIDs, right? IIDs of x, and this x is actually following. geometric and from the question from the pmf you can easily see that uh, the geometric 2 by 3 probability of success is 2 by 3. what we asked is what is the probability that <coughs> sorry max of x size so what does this mean is max of x1 comma x2 comma x3 is less than or equal to 2 so that is what we asked okay so now uh, okay i'll just give you some hints before we solve this so can i say this max of x1 comma x2 okay Uh, I will say like this: If x one is less than or equals to two, and x two is less than or equals to two, x three is less than or equals to two, then can I claim max of x one, x two, x three is less than or equals to two? Yes, sir. So can I say this? Yes, sir. So what do we want? Maximum of these three should be less than or equals to two. So will it by imply that if each one of the random variable is less than or equals to two, then max will be less than or equals to two? Yes, sir. So can I rewrite this thing? As Can I write it like this? So, yes. if all the three random variables are less than or equal to two, my max is less than or equal to two. Huh. So we have written it in joint form, and it is in the joint form as well as they are IIDs. Just now we discussed if they are IIDs, they are independent to each other. First of all, so I can write it like x one less than or equal to two times x two less than or equal to two times probability that x three less than or equal to two. And this is independence. And next, we can use the identical thing. So x1, x2, x3 follows the same distribution. So I can take the power. So I can just replace x2, x3 with x1, x3. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, what else is left? I know what is x1 follows. What does x1 follows? x1 follows geometric 2 by 3. 
So all of them x, actually you can replace it with x. Simply. Okay. So what does x follows? X follows a geometric distribution. So if it is following geometric distribution, we have uh, two possible cases. X can take one or x can take two. Right? These are the only two possible cases. Yes, sir. Then for one, getting success in the first time itself is two by two. Plus yes, getting success in the second time. That means one failure, one success. So one by three is a failure and second one is a success. Okay. So from here, this is 2 by 3 plus 2 by 9, whole cube. And it's 6 plus 2, 8 by 9, whole cube. Okay, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Is there the option? Yes, there is an option, 8 by 9, whole cube. And I hope that should be the correct answer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Abhishek. Yes, sir. I have doubt in PA uh, second question. Practice, Practice assignment. assignment question. Yes, sir. And I have one request also. Please, uh, can you share this PDF? Ah, yes, I will share this. PDF. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, question two is: Is this the question? Two fair dice are thrown simultaneously. Let mm -hmm. X be the outcome on the first die, and Y be the sum of the outcomes on both the dice. Uh, I tried, sir. Let me tell you what I am trying ah, to do. Ah, that's here. great. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so what I am doing is uh, x. The range of x should be one to six. Okay. Hmm. Ah, I just find... a second. Let me write down practice assignment question two. Yes, uh, let sir. me write down just give what is given so that uh, the others okay. who are in this session will also get an. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay. So yeah, two fair dice are thrown. And X uh, will be the number on the first uh, die. Simultaneously. Yes, sir. Simultaneously. And X represents the number on first die. So this, this symbol is the number. Number on the first die. And what does Y represent? Y sum sum uh, of sum of yeah. two die. So it just represent sum of numbers on the two dice. Yes, sir. Hmm. Ah, now now proceed. So now the range of x is one to six, and the range of y will be two to twelve. Ah, range of x is one to six. Right. Range of y is two to twelve. Two to twelve. Hmm. Uh, so now I'm trying to uh, define like you about did the uh, Z is equal to y, y minus X is equal to like some function is defined. Ah, okay. in, so you, you just uh, defined a new function uh, Z is equals to Y minus X. Y minus X, which is greater than equal to six. Ah, okay. We wanted to find probability that Z is greater than or equal to six. Yes, sir. So we want this. So, so our goal is to find this. Yes, sir. Hmm. Ah, now proceed. Uh, so, uh, I try to make table for this. Okay. Okay. Let's yeah. let's let's draw the table. Since y has many values, let me put y on this side and x on. So this is y and this is x. So x is one, two, three, four, five, six. And y has 2, 3, 4, and so on till 2. Okay. Yes, sir. So hmm. uh, we are interested only in the 6 or greater than 6 part. So uh, uh, this should be, uh, if we take x is equal to 1, hmm. then my uh, this uh, x should be, uh, y should be 7 or up to, uh, should be 7 only. Should be right. 7 only or above 7 also. Uh, uh, greater than right uh, so seven and above seven mm. and above right 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 seven and above so so if x is one my y should be seven then seven minus one is six yes sir it can also be eight because eight minus one is seven which yes, is greater sir. than or equals to six yes sir yes sir so up to twelve this 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 and this yes yes sir and for two it is start from eight to twelve uh, for two it will start from eight to twelve Correct. 
and uh, keep doing this we made a table for, uh, for three is this for four is this for five for is this right huh I mean, 8, 9, 10 and all cannot happen, right? Because two days, some cannot go beyond. Uh, I mean, if one is, if X is 1, Y can max be 6, which will be 7, right? So it cannot be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ah, 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 that is fine. That is fine. It cannot be. But on the joint distribution table, these are the values. It will be zeros only. The entries will be zeros. Okay, okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, after that, I didn't understand what to do. I... Uh, understand it okay so these are the possible cases you have to worry you just have to add all these probabilities right till yes, here sir. you are okay yes right? sir. now let's exclude few things see why is the sum okay huh yes sir some so when i say sum uh, this is the first die plus the second die value mm -hmm. x represents the number on the first die yes sir uh, so when x is 1, so that means you got 1 here. Hmm. And the second die can maximum give you 7. Yes, sir. Maximum. maximum uh, like 12. maximum, it gives you 6. 6. Second die. On the second die. Ye yes, sir. It can give you max of 6. And the sum can go max of 7. If, hmm. if, you, if the first die is 1, mm -hmm. your sum cannot exceed 7. Yes, sir. Right. Agreed? Yes, sir. Uh, agreed. So that means X, y being 8 and x being 1 is a not possibility case. Not possibility case is probability will be 0. Okay. Right? See, this is not possible at all. Huh, Some huh. being 8 and x, the first, first die being uh, 1. This is not okay. possible. Not possible means there is no chance. There is no probability. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. So okay. this is 0. Similarly, zero. 9, 10, 11, 12, all these things will be 0. Okay, okay, understood. Uh, understood. Yes. Now sir. let's go to two. Two will get the maximum eight. Maximum eight. So this is zero, 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 zero. Huh. Right. And Similar, three. similarly for three, we get maximum of two nine. Huh. And so others will be zero. Zero. Similarly for four, four this five will and be six. Zero. For five, this will be zero. And six, okay. we can reach to maximum 12. Ah, it can reach to maximum 12. So I didn't put zero there. Okay. So, so from the table, you thought like these many values I should add. But what hmm. happened is all are zeros. You don't need to worry about that. Okay. 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 So the only thing we have to worry about is this, 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 and this. Hmm. Right. right. What right. is this? Sum being seven. And the first is one. One. Only one case should be possible. Only one case is possible where the first die is one and the second die is six. So it is one by 36, right? It has probability one by 36. Uh -huh. similarly, uh, so similarly, so getting two and eight. Uh -huh. Two what and eight. Two, only one case. Two, two and six. And six is the possibility case for it. 1 by, 1 by 36. So now these will be 1 by 36. 1 by 36. Similarly, if you check, you just cross check this. Mm -hmm. This will also be 1 by 36. 1 by 36. Only one possible case. See, mm -hmm. x is determining your first die value. Yes, sir. And this, this, this entries are like maximum possible thing. Okay. So that yes, will determine sir. the y value also. Uh, not y value that will determine the second die throw entry also yes sir once both are determined it is only one possible case. yes sir understood right so how many you have one two three four five six 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 by so 36 have, uh, one uh, by 12. so this will be six by 36 is uh this is one by six one by six what was the answer given i have to check i uh, let me check, sir. Give me a second. Hmm. One by six, sir. It is right. One by six? Yes. Yes, sir. So oh, that's it. Thank you, sir. And okay. please post this PDF, sir. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank sure. you, sir. Okay, okay, guys. Then uh, it's been a long session. Uh,
i will meet you guys in the next week very helpful session sir thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you yeah have a great thank Bye. you